I mean, Hebrews the 10th chapter, Hebrews the 10th chapter, I'm so excited for preaching time, Hebrews the 10th chapter, the 23rd verse, Hebrews Tenth chapter, the twenty third verse, Hebrews, the tenth chapter, the twenty third verse. I heard somebody say, What was the favorite coffee of the New Testament Christians? Someone else said, Hebrews. <laughs> Dr. Pitt said, keep your day job, Pastor. <laughs> Hebrews, <laughs> the 10th chapter, the 23rd verse. <laughs> it reads as us, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promises is faithful. Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Well, brothers and my sister, I ask that you would join me in a word of prayer as we share and keep on sharing um, on the sermon subject, same sermon subject as Last week, finish strong. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, finish strong. Finish, finish strong, finish strong. Let us look to the Lord. God, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Grateful, God, for this moment that is yours. Grateful, God, for this opportunity to share your gospel. Now, God, move me out of the way and you have your way. Now, we thank you, God, for the words you have for this house. That is 2019 goes out. And we approach the beginning of a new decade that we shall finish strong. To your honor, to your glory, save somebody, heal somebody, deliver somebody in this service, set the captive free, and we'll be sure to give your name the honor and the praise and the glory, because all we want is for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted high. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Amen. Finish strong. My brothers and my sisters, is. Uh, many of you all were at 10 o'clock service last Sunday. You realize uh, that for the past couple of Sundays that we've been navigating, dealing with a word the Lord we believe has for this house in this season, and that is that we need to finish strong. Uh, we've been dealing with the fact that we are have a less than a month and a half left in this decade, amen, that as we are here at the end of 2019, about to go into 2020, uh, 2020, that we cannot go in the same way that we are, but we've got to finish strong. We talked about the fact that finishing strong is not just about uh, what we do at the end of here, but it's about us being prepared for the new season. We talked about the fact that oftentimes, because I like to watch uh, stuff on Netflix, uh, I was talking to my good friend. And Dr. Jordan, and we were excited because today the crown comes out on Netflix, amen, and, and so as we binge, watch, I'll be binge watching it the whole flight, amen, somebody, as we binge watch it. Uh, one of the things that I've come to understand, Reverend Bowers, uh, about Netflix series is, is that if it's a 10 episode series, uh, that man, oh man, by episode 9 and 10, it's going to be something because they always finish off a series strong. Uh, but not just that, they finish it off strong, but they don't finish it off strong because that's necessarily the end of the series. Series, but the series may have a next season, but they finish off one series strong so that you can be prepared for the next season. We talked about it last week. We said because in the next season, there are going to be some new characters. The next season, there are going to be some new locations. The next season, there are going to be some new possibilities. But there's a need to finish off this season you're in. What? strong. And so we talked about for Community of Hope that for the rest of this year, for the rest of this decade, that we're going to be preaching, teaching, and focusing on finishing strong. Uh, in that, uh, I, I talked to y'all and preached to y'all about it. And so therefore, the Lord felt the need to wake me up at four in the morning, Monday morning. Amen. Woke me up at four in the morning and gave me a framework for how we need to finish strong and told me for Community of Hope, individually and collectively, if we're going to finish strong, we need to be strong in five areas. Spirit 
Spirit said that we need to be Sunday strong, we need to be study strong, we need to be spiritually strong, we need to be service strong, and we need to be stewardship strong. Sunday strong, study strong, spiritually strong, service strong, and stewardship strong. And so what I did, I, I, I had something put together so it could kind of be a quick explainer. So if multimedia could uh, get that to play in right now, I would appreciate it as we're looking at how to finish strong. With a new decade approaching here at Community of Hope, we are dedicated to finish strong. Finishing strong means that we will be Sunday strong, study strong, spiritually strong, service strong, and stewardship strong. We will be Sunday strong because we understand that our Sunday coming together is not optional, but essential. We meet for worship because God is good and also because we are better together. The Bible talks about iron sharpening iron, and we know that together, we help each other grow stronger in Christ. We must be study strong, because we know that it is hard to build muscle if you won't train. We study in order to grow stronger in God's Word. It is through God's Word that we are equipped to face life's challenges. We strive to be spiritually strong, because we realize that our spiritual disciplines are the foundation of our strength. Prayer and fasting pushes us towards spiritual connection and clarity. There is power in prayer. We need to be service strong because we acknowledge that the strongest among us is the greatest servant. We are blessed to be a blessing and we don't do it for the grand, but we do it for our God. We are stewardship strong because we are aware that God has blessed us to be resources to the world and it is our responsibility to be faithful stewards, to take care of all that God has given us. We give because God has given so much to us. In order to finish this decade strong, we will need to be Sunday strong, study strong, spiritually strong, service strong, and stewardship strong. Then we will be fully prepared to walk into the new season that 2020 has in store. Sunday strong, study strong, spiritually strong, steward service strong, I'm sorry, and stewardship strong, amen? And so what's going to happen is that on the next five Sundays, myself and Reverend Bill, we're going to be focusing on one of those areas and sharing with you opportunities and ways we can grow to be the strength that God has called us to be, amen? And so today I want to talk about being Sunday strong. Turn to your neighbor and say Sunday strong, Sunday strong, Sunday strong. When I look at the scripture, this is a scripture that's very familiar that it's talked about what? Not forsaking the assembly of the saints, amen? It says, uh, uh, and when you look at the scripture, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. I, I want to talk to you about how to be Sunday strong. Amen. One of the first things I believe if you're going to be Sunday strong is you've got to understand we don't shop on Sundays. Turn to your neighbor and say, we don't shop on Sundays. Yeah, some of y'all ain't say that real hard. Some of y'all ain't say that real hard. Now watch, it's going to make sense for you. I, I, I'm not going to say you can't go shopping on Sundays. I, I, it's going to make sense for you, I promise you. Don't tune out on me just yet. Some of y'all tuned out, amen, amen, amen. Some of y'all don't need to shop on Sundays, truth be told, somebody. And you don't need to be shopping on what they call Black Friday neither, amen, somebody. Spending all your money and getting broke so that you go into 2020 broke on some stuff that you don't even need. Amen, somebody, but that's another sermon for another day. But we don't shop on Sunday. When I look, uh, there's an area in northern New Jersey called Bergen County, New Jersey. I was blessed to serve as an assistant pastor there in Inglewood, New Jersey. And in Bergen County, New Jersey, it is the only county in the nation that still has what they call the blue laws. The blue laws say that there are certain kinds of shopping that do not happen on Sundays. So in Bergen County, you cannot go to the mall on a Sunday. That all of the regular retail stores are closed in Bergen County on a Sunday. It's an amazing thing, but they don't allow you to shop. What? 
on Sundays. And the challenge for me is that not that you are actually a shopping in a mall or something, but many of you and many folks come to church and they end up shopping on Sunday. What do you mean? Well, Dr. Parrish, I, I believe that one of the challenges theologically of the past kind of 15 to 20 years has been what I call the commodification of the gospel, uh, that we have turned the gospel into a transactional theology instead of a transformational theology, uh, that we've gotten so caught up in this tit for tat kind of thing that I do something so God does something for me that we become consumers. If you look at much of the church growth literature of the past 20 years, it talked about looking at church people as consumers and then shaping the church so that the consumers were excited about what was happening there and as if the gospel was a product. But the challenge in shaping it that way is that folks didn't come to church like they're going shopping. Amen, somebody? Seeing themselves as consumer. But the fact of the matter is you are not consumer, but you are a part of the body. Amen? Because we don't go to church, we are the church. And the challenge is that when you see yourself going to church, when you see yourself as consumer, then you sit there and you were expecting God to be able to give you this or give you that. When the truth be told, it is who you are as the church that helps us to come together. Amen? And the, see, see, when I go to the store, I deal differently when I go to the store as a consumer uh, because if the store does not give me what I want, I'll just go to another store. That's why many of y'all are church hopping. Amen? You're church hopping because you're church shopping. Amen, somebody? That you can't get stuck in one church or the other because no church actually meets your needs or gives you what you need. But the truth be told, if you at your fourth or fifth church in the last four or five years, then maybe the issue is not the churches, but it's you. Amen, somebody? Because you have the attitude that you are the consumer. You see, when you're a consumer, then you come in and everybody has to shape everything for you. Uh, but is there anybody in the house that knows I come to church and I don't need no praise team to hype me up. I don't need no preacher to hype me up. I don't need no minister to hype me up. But I come to church already ready. Turn to your neighbor and say, because I'm not a consumer. Because I'm not a consumer. You see, when you shop on Sundays, when you're a consumer, amen, somebody, then it doesn't matter what time you get to the store as long as you get there before it closes. Amen, somebody. And that's the challenge sometimes, not with y'all. Well, maybe with some of y'all. Amen, somebody. That's the challenge is that what well, at the beginning of the service, it's a few folks here, right? But by the end of service, it's a gang of folks here because folks decide to come when they want to come. Now, you're going to tell me, well, Reverend, it's hard to get up at a certain time. You get up and get to work on time. Amen, somebody? If you can get to work on time all week long and the work ain't got a heaven or a hell to send you to, when you're coming to give glory to God, you might as well make it a priority to get to the house of the Lord on time. I know you may be late once in a while, but not every Sunday. That's a decision of how you prioritize the gospel. Some say, well, I just want to get the word. Well, you missed it because you've made it about what you get instead of what you give. But when you understand we are the church and we are the body of Christ and we come together as one body of believers, then you understand your presence is important up in here. And if the praise team can't sing on key, I come with my own key and I got warmed up in the shower. I got warmed up in the car right over here to say I've come to give God glory because I don't shop on Sundays one of the first things you've got to understand is we don't shop on Sundays the second thing you've got to understand if you're going to be Sunday strong is that being Sunday strong keeps us out of the mud turn to your neighbor and say neighbor stay out of the mud I, I like this scripture because the scripture talks about to let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promises faithful. And then it said, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. I love it because uh, the, the, the scripture writer says, let us, amen, turn your name, say us. Now, when, when I was a young man, when I was a young man at Paramount Baptist Church and the preacher would be preaching, um, I, I would often hear a deacon say, hold your hope, preacher, hold your hope, amen? <laughs> and I realized it came from uh, this scripture, turn to your neighbor and say, hold your hope, reverend, hold your hope. I, I made all y'all reverends today, amen? Somebody, y'all see how I deputized you? Huh? But, but the, the thing that showed me in this scripture huh, was not just hold your hope, but turn to your other neighbor and say, hold your rope, hold your rope, hold your, hold your rope. Uh, one of the things I learned uh, years ago, years ago, when I was a 
young boy, when I was a young boy, there was this game we would often play, it would often be on field day at school, called tug of war. Anybody ever play tug of war? And on tug of war, what would happen is they had this huge rope, amen? It had this huge rope and say it may stretch from there to here. And at the midway point, there would be a mud pit, amen, somebody? They would have a mud pit, amen? Now some of y'all ain't grew up with the mud pit. Y'all just had the little nice diddy tug of war, amen? But the gangster tug of war was with the mud pit, amen, somebody? They had the mud pit in the middle. And what would happen would be you'd have one team on that side with the rope and the other team on this side with the rope. And what would happen is you would grab a hold of the rope and it was your job to make sure that your team did not get pulled, what? into the pit. And so what would happen is that team would be pulling as much as they could and this team would be pulling as much as they could and you would do all. Now you wanted a strong team, amen? You wanted some, but I found out that it was not just about having the strongest people on your team, but it was having a team that could work the best together. Because you could have a bunch of strong folks on your team, but if they weren't coordinated, a team that didn't have as many strong people, but just had a good ethic and good coordination could be able to pull them into the pit. You see, what would happen is that you would sit there and everybody would be holding on. And then you would have somebody on your team to coordinate. And they would say, pull. And you would pull at the same time. And then you would hold up. And they'd say, pull. And you would pull at the same time. And they would hold up. And they would say, pull. And you would pull it. But you needed everybody to pull. Amen. And that's what church is. That we come to the house of the Lord so that we can all get together to keep each other out the mud and say, pull. Uh, that I don't know what you've been going through this week uh, but you'd have had some enemies trying to pull you in the mud uh, but I come to the house of the Lord uh, turn to the neighbors on your row uh, and say I'm glad to be on this row with you uh, now pull uh, I, I, I need you to pull uh, I need you to pull yourself up out of that depression uh, pull yourself up out of that negativity uh, pull yourself up out of that bad relationship uh, pull yourself up out of that negative spending uh, pull yourself up out of them bad habits uh, you got to pull uh, to your neighbor say neighbor pull that we come to church to pull and to keep each other out the mud now the worst thing in tug of war is to be pulling on a rope and everybody on your team decide to let go because then you end up what in the mud when you decide you don't want to come to church on Sunday you let go of your part of the rope somebody in church on that Sunday is going through what God God got you through and they need your testimony that Sunday about how the Lord can make a way somehow you sitting at home and you letting them get pulled into the mud but is there anybody in the house today say baby I'm gonna hold the rope and hold my hope and give God ay 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 being Sunday strong keeps you out the mud but the third thing that we're gonna be gone is you got to understand we get free together but we get free together we get free t together that's what I love about the scripture writer the scripture writer does all this us talk does all this let us give up let us not give up meeting together does all this talk about us as being a collective because we understand that we get through this and we get free what together. If there's ever anybody that should understand about church and the significance of the house of the Lord and the significance of a Sunday morning, it's the, it should be black folks and those who've been dispossessed and poor folks. If there's ever folks, you've got to understand that even when we were enslaved, we understood that we needed to come together. That even when they, the, the master didn't want us to come together, we would steal away into the woods in a hush harbor and, 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 and understand it with two or three are gathered in God's name that God, that God will be in the midst that, 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 that even when Lord have mercy we were in the midst of Jim Crow even when we were in the midst of segregation that, that, that we use church to be the place where we strategize and the place where we organize you don't understand Sunday school ain't just about Noah's Ark Sunday school is where we taught each other how to read and write Sunday school was where we came together the church wasn't just a place for us to just come praise 
The church was a place for us to come find refuge. That we had caught hell all week long, all week long, taking care of other people's children, scrubbing other people's toilets, being talked about and called all kinds of names. But when we came into the house of the Lord, we were deacon this and deacon this that, mother this and father that. We could hold up our head because the church was a place that even we got ready to fight, that before we faced dogs and before we faced water hoses and before we faced Bull Connor, we went to the house of the Lord and had a little talk with Jesus and had a prayer and praise meeting because we didn't just need our own power. We needed soul power. We needed the power of the Holy Ghost. Have I got anybody in here that knows, baby, we get free what? Together. Ephesians in 6th chapter talks about our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Now most of the time we get caught up in the fact it talks about the struggle not being against flesh and blood. But I like the fact that it says our struggle, not just my struggle, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against rulers and authorities and powers in this dark world, spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. I need y'all to hear that. It didn't say it's against our power. It said it's against powers, against authorities. How in the world you got a plural fighting against you and you're going to try to fight back by yourself? You better get up in here and squad up. You better get up in here and get some backup. You better get up in here and grab a hold of it with each other and fight the good fight and walk the good walk and talk the good talk. Have I got anybody in here that knows we're in this thing? What? Together. See, I need you and you need me because we're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body and in his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Turn your name and say, neighbor, I need you to survive. I can't do it by myself, but I've come to be Sunday strong, to lock up with you, and we watch God work. When you're Sunday strong, your community can change. When you're Sunday strong, your family can get better. When you're Sunday strong, your life can turn around. Have I got anybody in the house that will help me give God a Sunday strong praise? Give God the glory. Give God. Come on, give God glory in the house today. Give God glory in the house today. Somebody connect with the praise of the neighbor on your row. Say, neighbor, this praise ain't for me. This praise is for you. Because I need you to survive. We're in this thing together. Together, 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 together. I don't come in here just because I want to hear myself. I come in here because I want to be with you. And we're in this thing. Sunday strong, baby. We're Sunday strong. We're Sunday strong. We're Sunday strong. We're not no narcissistic Christians that thinks it's all about us. But we're Sunday strong. Because we're in this thing. Together. Won't you stand all over the church, all that are able. I need you to survive. I, I need you to survive. Share with you. Last Sunday, myself and Reverend Bill asked you all to keep us in prayer. We had to preach a tag team at Ebenezer for their men's conference on Friday night. 
ask that there were brothers that could make their way. We'd be blessed to see them come. Now, I know y'all think we just say that so we can have numbers. And no, we say that because we need prayer. And when we see our folks there, it's a blessing because it's encouraging. And it helps us with whatever we're going through. With some Friday, both me and Reverend Bill had events earlier that day. I had to put my car in the shop and get some work done on it during the day. We were preaching at seven, both at the house and around four something. We got the word that Granddaddy Tillman had died. Granddaddy Tillman is the grandfather of Reverend Bill's best friend since first grade. I didn't even know Granddaddy Tillman's first name until I visited him in the hospital this week. Early this week, he had gone into the hospital. They had induced him into a coma. Me and Reverend Bill had went, that was last week, had went there this week and had prayed over him. And by the next day, he had woken up. He was doing good. So we think everything's good. But Friday around 4.30, we get the call and he's died. Now remember, we have to preach at 7. At 4.30, we find out he's dead. And so we get clothes on and go to Fort Washington Hospital to be with the body and the family, to read scripture over the body and pray over him. Someone we've known since Reverend Bill was in first grade, since I was in fifth grade. Someone who has lived right down the street from my parents and helped raise us and groom us. It hit us so hard. We're there with the family, prayed with the family, prayed with him. Got back home around 6, around 6.15. Had to be at Ebenezer by 7-ish to preach. We didn't want to preach because we were grief stricken. We didn't want to preach because we had just left the death room. We didn't want to preach. We just got finished praying over the dead body of someone who we've loved for decades. I'll never forget coming out the back, Pastor Browning, come out and I see some of the brothers there. And it was the encouragement we needed. Because we're in this together. Just the presence of the brothers, knowing that the brothers were there praying for us and with us and for us, was enough to just give us an extra little bit to work through our grief to realize we still had a job to do and to push past our own hurt to do what we had to do in the moment. See, this isn't just about y'all coming and we come together just so we can have numbers. You know, this is we come together because we support each other through everything. And the challenge is, now, I love streaming because streaming is important for those who can't make it. For those who in the hospital, for those whose job has them stuck up, for those who it just can't make it. But the challenge is many of us uh, have taken the convenience of streaming and so we'll rather be convenient than have the commitment of making our way here. And so we need to make sure that we're not using convenience to keep us from coming together because when we don't come together, we miss each other. Those brothers' presence at that service was important to me in a rough moment that none of them knew was a rough moment. I said, and none of them knew was coming because we didn't know it was coming. But yet, just because they were going to be there just out of a regular be there with us, it was, it was such a blessing because it helped us push through. Turn to your neighbor and say, I, I need you, neighbor. I need you. I need you. I may not be going through nothing this Sunday, but next Sunday, who knows? And just your familiar face and a hug can be what helps get me through. 
And if you decide not to come because the Redskins are playing, come on, they ain't even had a winning season in 20 years. How y'all still going to mess church for the Redskins? I'm going to share one last thing with you. I'm going to share, sometimes as a pastor, I can be petty. I will admit this. That wasn't even the petty part. Here going to be the petty part. And pettiness connects to y'all, too, because, you know, in churches all over this region, when the Redskins start playing, especially they got a home game, or everybody be at 10 o'clock, don't nobody be at 12 o'clock, or just folks don't come to church. All over the region, not just this church, right? When the Redskins have a home game, I start praying against them. Soon as I leave church, I'm looking at the score, hoping they losing. I hope they lost. Mess up the work of the Lord. I hope they don't never make the playoffs. People may come back to church then. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was Patty. I told you it was Patty. I, told, I acknowledged the Patty off the beginning, right? I need you to survive, amen? You just show up at church, I may not be so petty. <laughs> Listen, y'all. <laughs> Rep. Bill said, I got power in my prayers. I've been praying for them ever since community of hope didn't open, amen. <laughs> I'm so sorry, y'all, that was petty, I, I apologize. Huh? Listen, listen, listen. Who wouldn't want to go to church? You can't laugh, amen? You can't have a joy. Someone here, we need you. You're not saved. You've never accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life. Now, if you're looking for a perfect church, we're not the one. But the truth be told, as soon as you find a perfect church, as soon as you join, it won't be perfect anymore. But if you want a place with some real folks who are really just trying to do their best by God and trying to live better tomorrow than we did today, better the next day than we did after that, trying to grow in Christ, you found the right place. If you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or you may already be saved, but you need a church home, a place where you can grow, a place of family, a place where other folks want to see you, today's your day. Just step out from where you are. Come on, won't you make your way down to this altar? If you're not saved or if you need a church, come on, make your way down to the altar. We just want to pray with you. We're excited for what we believe the Lord can do in your life. Someone today, you're not saved. You need a church home. Today, you're not saved. You need a church.